Garrett Cole has the ball tonight for the Pirates. The Bucks with some home cooking for the next nine games as they start the final homestand of the 2014 season. The Chicago Cubs are in for game one of a three-game weekend set. We take a look at the standings in the National League Central Division. The Pirates start the night just two and a half behind the division-leading Cardinals. They are in the second wild card spot. A game and a half up on the Brewers. Hi again, everybody, along with Steve Blass. I'm Tim Never. Robbie Smikowski with us as well. Garrett Cole against Yoshi Wada. That's the pitching matchup. And here at home, Steve, the Pirates have been particularly good this season. Yeah, they, re they really have. Now they're coming off a very, very successful road trip. But back at PNC Park, take a look at the number. 6-11 winning percentage. Second best uh, tied in the National League. Sellouts. We're expecting some more sellouts this weekend and for the rest of this homestand. And 12-4 uh, and four against the Cubs. And the Cubs are beat up. Uh, Castro's out. Rizzo is out. They're catching the Cubs at exactly the right time. Yes, and for Garrett Cole, he is 4-0 and in his career against the Cubs. And he's got his first career home run against Chicago last time out on Sunday when he had another terrific outing, striking out eight. Yeah, seems like we got the right man for the matchup tonight. Take an overview of Garrett Cole as you take a look at the overall numbers. He is starting to separate speed. He's starting to throw more change-ups. He's going to take a little off the curveball. That's part of the maturation uh, progression for a young stud pitcher. When you see him complement the good fastball with that effective stuff in the strike zone, you're going to see a lot more strikeouts. And the Pirates have won 12 of the 18 games started by the young right-hander. It's a free shirt Friday night. It's a great atmosphere as the quest for October continues on the North Shore. Cubs and Pirates coming up on Root Sports. Awesome just to see everybody in there packed up, ready to go, and uh, sharing some. It's truly an advantage for us uh, being home team and having that crowd behind us. So we have the best fans in the league. We know they want us to win as bad as we want to win out there, so it's nice to be a home for the advantage. I know how, we, how well we played when PNC blacked out last last year, so you know, for them to pack that house for that last home stretch would be huge.
for Bucktober once again and one of the key cogs last year down the stretch taking the hill now Garrett Cole Pirates right hander coming out to a nice ovation from the Bucks fans that have come in here tonight to see the Pirates and Cubs in game one Chris Coglin will be the first batter that Cole faces Get ready to get this one underway. The Cubs lineup written up by Rick Renteria. It's brought to you by Honda. Coglin and the rookie Baez, Luis Valbuena in the three spot, hitting 324 over his last 10 games. Five doubles, four RBIs. He scored eight times. Castillo, the catcher bats, clean up Kalish in right field. Mike Olt at first base. Arismendi Alcantara is in center field. Logan Watkins, the second baseman, and Suyoshi Wada doing the pitching and batting ninth against Garrett. Garrett Cole making start number 19, eight and five overall has pitched extremely well as Tim mentioned. Four and all lifetime against the Cubbies, and this is a Cubby lineup that is damaged. So the opportunity for Garrett and the Pirates exists. Now underway now, the first pitch ball one to Chris Coglin. But Cole seems like he has really enjoyed his starts against the Cubs. Twice this year he's faced them. He has struck out a combined 18. Back on the 10th of April at Wrigley Field, he struck out 10 Cubs. And in his last start last week in Chicago, and hit a home run too. Any, well, run anybody can hit a, anybody can hit a home run at Wrigley. Well, yeah, you're living proof. <laughs> a check swing roller. Well, I mentioned the fact that he did join the exclusive club of Steve Glass and Bob Walker, yeah. who hit their only major league home runs. At Wrigley Field, so it's not a bad club to be in. It's a very exclusive club. One ball and two strikes to Coglin. Did yeah. he go? And leaving the count, two balls, two strikes. First close one we've had of the night. Point Park University strike zone, saying that it was a good call by. Home plate umpire Paul Schreiber. But did he go? I thought the pitch was close enough to be called a strike. And back foul and out of play. I think Paul Schreiber calling the balls and strikes. There's Ted Barrett. He is the crew chief. Now Alfonso Marquez at first. Mark Ripperger is at second base. And Schreiber behind the plate. Two two. Oh. I hope that got the back of a chair, not one of uh, pirate fans. But one of the keys, I think, for for Garrett Cole, if he throws his really good above average stuff to this ball club, he's going to be hard to beat. I mean, the, this is a lineup that. Uh, is not power laden, but he's got to throw strikes. That's going to be the key. He's in the strike zone. He's going to be all right. We talk about Cole developing still. And, uh, he still has some more potential to to reach even higher than he has right now, and eventually becoming an ace of a staff. But secondary pitches are something that he needs to continue to develop. Walker throws out Coglin, and there's one down. One away for Chicago. Full vote defense for the Pirates. Travis Snyder in left, Andrew McCutcheon in center, Jose Tabat in right. Harrison and Mercer, Walker and Sanchez around the infield with Stewart doing the catching. Trying to budget the time of Russell Martin behind the plate down the stretch. Snyder in left, no Marte tonight. Marte hit by a pitch. They worked him out today. The issue is uh, the hand from two starts ago where he got hit by a pitch. He got hit by a pitch yesterday again on the arm by. A.J. Burnett in Philadelphia. So they worked him out. They held the lineup until they could determine whether or not Marte could start. The answer was no for tonight. Here is the shortstop, Javier Baez. And he follows this one away. One ball and one strike. Baez, a big swinger. Well, just to go back to Marte for a moment, if you win a game tonight, then maybe you can extend it. You know, the, the more you win, the more you can give. Somebody time to heal, and so uh, a win would certainly give them that consideration. There's that big swing. Let him keep swinging big. 
You're talking about Garrett Cole secondary pitches, change ups, curveballs, and that's what you do to a guy like this. Maybe even show him the fastball because he wants to swing at heat all the time and swing as hard as he can. And that will play into a smart pitcher's hands. Baez hitting just 171, but he does have seven homers in a short period of time in the big leagues. And he is down on strikes. Strikes out nearly 40% of the time. And Garrett Cole has strikeout number one. Yeah, good looking breaking ball delivered by Garrett. Starts on the corner, right down below the corner. That's an excellent pitch. Good look from the Allegheny Health Network Super Mall. Francisco Liriano yesterday, last night in Philadelphia, absolutely outstanding. One of his best outings as a Pirate. Eight shutout innings, 12 strikeouts, a season high. Valbuena pops this one up to left over near the line. Long run for Snyder, and he makes the ground. Three up and three down for the Cubs in the top of the first inning. The Bucks coming to bat. Raise it yeah. across the river. <laughs> no score. We go to the bottom of the first inning. Josh Harrison getting set to lead off for the Pirates against left-hander Siyoshi Wada. The Toyota starting lineup for the Pirates. Harrison and Mercer batting second. Andrew McCutcheon third. Cutch has climbed to third in the National League batting race. Last 11 games hitting 362. Five extra base hits. He scored eight runs. Walker in the cleanup spot. Jose Tabata. That's next. Then Gabby Sanchez, Travis Snyder, Chris Stewart hitting eight. And Garrett Cole doing the pitching, batting nine. Lofty 222 batting average. Cloudy skies here, but just a, a crisp night. 62 degrees at game time. Jacket weather. Temperatures are going down, and the, the hopes are getting higher here in Pittsburgh for another postseason run. Yep, early fall. Great time of the year for weather. Great time of the year for division races, wild card races, postseason baseball. So Yoshi Wada, four and two, ERA under three. Brief sampling of work. This will be start number 11. He's been very good in terms of control. He's got kind of a deceptive motion. He takes the, his hand way in back of, of the back. He gives a little wrist flip. So uh, he gets a little deception working. He gets a lot of swings and misses on so-called average stuff. 88, 89, 90, maybe 91. Not a fireballer, but uh, so far off to a good start with the Cubs. So Wana gets set to deliver to Harrison. And his first pitch is low ball one. Now Wada is considered a rookie, but he spent nine seasons in Japan. He'll go way in back of his back. And he'll show you that ball in back of his body. And then you got to wait for it to come back around. So he gets some swings and misses on what you might say is is not dominant stuff. A little bit of a teaser. Harrison got to face him twice last Friday and went two for two against him. Doubled and scored and singled. 
And then Wada ended up leaving the game after three and a third innings with a mild cramp in his left calf. 3 0 pitch. Josh takes a strike. Ooh, okay. Well, that's something we haven't seen Josh do all year. Toss the bat aside on a pitch that would have been ball four. I don't think anybody in that dugout's too happy right now with this call. It looked a little low. It was low. And Paul Schreiber's night begins. Now it's three and two. That changes things quite a bit. See, there's that 89 mile an hour fastball. He swung right through it because sometimes you get caught up where the hand and the arm and the motion is going, and you just kind of hit a blind spot, swing through the baseball. Payoff pitch fouled off. Josh hanging in there. He's 314 average, has him second in the batting race. Colorado's Justin Warno hitting 317. Yep. That's, that's very familiar. <laughs> Sometimes you just do that without even knowing. That's just your natural motion. But here's Josh. Single up the middle. Josh would much rather have that. Mm -hmm. And the walk. Got a nice note from a pirate fan who said, you know, I like the idea, just call him just Josh. You can call him Jay Hay, just Josh, whatever works, because everything's working for him. He keeps hitting like this, it'll be Mr. Harrison. President Harrison. Laid off single for just Josh, and he is at first. For Jordy Mercer batting in the two spot. We've seen Jordy do this against the left handers, move up on the order to bat second. His right handers will bat down toward the bottom of the order. Most of the time, eight. Wada with a 1 0 pitch. Again, mentioned that Wada spent nine seasons in Japan with the Fukuoka Club in the Pacific League. He also spent two years with the Orioles in the minor leagues. Ended up having Tommy John surgery while with the Orioles. Not the biggest guy in the world. And Jordy rips this one into the glove of foul point. The second for one. Back to first. Double play. Oh my, what a play by Luis Valbuena. You cannot hit the ball much harder than Jordy Mercer just did. You talk about the hot corner, that was on fire. Great reaction play at third base. Great reaction play. That ball was smoke. Trying to make it a little tough on Watkins to make the turn. But that ball was smoked down to Valbuena. He had a lot of time to make that play. After he got it, uh, they wound up having a lot of time. Boy, what a snare. Here's Kutch. Strike called to McCutcheon. Well, Jordy hit it right on the nose. We've seen two pretty well hit balls and two batters. But now two outs and nobody on. Cuts it 3 10. He's in the hole, nothing in two. Cuts it with a chance at another MVP season. He's going to be in the discussion, certainly. Two pitch, and that is over the glove of the shortstop Baez and into left field for a single. Just wasn't quite tall enough. Pirates having some good looks at Wada early, hitting the ball solidly. Watch Andrew, slow mo, Allegheny Health Network. Good to have you guys back, Tim. Welcome home. My goodness. Uh, were you surprised you had to come to work today? Well, I was looking Forget forward to, to it. it. I wasn't looking forward to it after the St. Louis series, but I got real excited in Chicago and Philadelphia. And I think everybody in this city is ready for the Pirates to come home and, and get this thing done. Neil Walker at the plate, batting right handed, fouls it off. Yep, six and four on the 10 game trip. Didn't start off very well, 0 and 3. So Harrison now up to 316 with his single. McCutcheon at 312 after his hit. Morneau with the Rockies not yet in action. They'll play uh, 
St. Louis getting underway within the hour. It's up. Free shirt Friday tonight. Clutch, clutch. That's the shirt tonight. It'll be worn all around the schools of Pittsburgh on Monday. By the way, Mr. Morneau will be teeing it up against Mr. Wainwright, so he'll have his challenges. Not to say that he's not capable, but Mr. Wainwright's pretty good too. One one to Neil. One and two. Yeah, it's one of those tricky situations. Who do you root for tonight? <laughs> you, you want Morneau to do poorly so that the two Pirates players, McCutcheon and Harrison, can continue to climb in the batting race. That's the individual side of it. On the other side, the Rockies might need Morno to help them beat the Cardinals. I think in the big picture, you want the well, Rockies to do what they can to beat the Cardinals. Well, I want Morno to go 0 for 5, and the Cardinals get beat by 19 to 2. Well, that'd be the best of both worlds if you yeah. can get them both. Yeah. And Walker, a chopper to Baez. They'll go the short way to Watkins to force out McCutcheon. A runs, two hits, and a man left. After a full inning, no score at PNC Park. Thank you very much, Dan. Second inning, first pitch of it. And it's a strike call to the catcher, Wellington Castillo. Nicely cruising in at 95 miles an hour. Castillo, 241, 11 home runs, 40 runs batted in. Pitch. Nothing in two. 94 from Cole. Yes, sir. He is excited. Should be. Watching the Buckos in a pennant race. See where the Orioles are. I mean, the Orioles are counting down the magic number. They're in single digits. The ten and a half up over the Blue Jays, eleven and a half over the Yankees, and Chris Davis has been a pretty big offensive weapon for them. So they'll be missing him for a little while. There's a slow roller. Walker's got it. Throw on to first. He got it. A kick by Sanchez. And the perfect candidate running down the first baseline. Wellington Castillo, a catcher, not possessing blazing speed. Take nothing away from the nice play. Ball well, gets by Garrett Cole. Neil Walker over in the shortstop side. Plenty of time to get Mr. Castillo. 
ball almost rolling up out of the glove. Yeah, I saw that he used the bare hand, and there's the good pick by Sanchez. Gabby with a nice play. One out. Batter is Ryan Kalish. Kalish fouls this one back. Well, other news around baseball, of course, of the the awfulness, I guess, in Milwaukee last night between uh, Miami and the Brewers, and Giancarlo Stanton being hit in the face by Mike Fires. Reed Johnson gets hit after that, coming up to, to bat for him, and, and then the melee that followed, and then the uh, the Marlins pitcher, Anthony Descalfini, comes in and he hits Carlos Gomez. He is run from the ball game and today suspended three games. He's going to appeal it. And it, it just uh, still scratching your head over the Arizona thing with Kutch, why Randall Delgado was not suspended, fined, or anything. And Mike Fires, who, uh, you know, you could, you, you can't judge intent. That's one thing Clint Hurdle keeps telling you. You can't judge intent. Mike Fires was also fined an undisclosed amount today. And strike three called. Kalish down on strikes. Got number two. And last night in Milwaukee, Stanton. Oh my goodness, that is just so scary to see. And, and it, you, you, you know, you can't judge intent when it gets down to cases. Only the pitcher knows. You know, there's so much of a gray area, so much of a blur. But when it, the ongoing sequence of events, when people start hitting each other, if you're convinced that somebody's trying to hit one of your players, and it doesn't have to be your stud. Doesn't have to be your main man. If you're convinced as a pitcher, you can take a personal stand and let that player, let that teammate know that you've got his back. And after the hit of Stanton, Reed Johnson came in to, to pick up the at bat once they got uh, Stanton off to the hospital. As Old rips this one foul for strike two. And, and then he hit Reed Johnson on the hand, and the uh, fires had to be taken out of the ballgame by the team. And now Gomez. Hit by Di Scofani and tempers were hot again. And uh, Di Scofani was suspended today, three games. Now, well, uh, asking, uh, asking you though, as a, a he's former pitcher, should pitchers? Be suspended more often in these cases to protect the hitters. We've seen McCutcheon thrown at. We saw him uh, thrown at his head yesterday in, uh, in in Philadelphia. Should Major League Baseball take a harder stance? Well, it's up to the umpire. The umpire's got to determine if. if well, I'd, the umpire's got to throw somebody out. Suspensions. Uh, usually, it's it's down to the last guy, and uh, that, that hits somebody because if it keeps going on, you know it's intentional. You. you you see the theme of things, and uh, yeah, you, you you don't want injury. So yeah, if it's intentional, if, if it gets down to that case, gets. The problem is with pitchers, you suspend them for what number of games? Well, Garrett Cole rings up Mike Holt. We'll talk a little more about that in the bottom of the second. No score at PNC Park.
Well, Andrew McCutcheon there targeted by Randall Delgado. You see what Miguel Montero had set up, and prior to that, gave an inappropriate gesture with his fingers for the sign, which is uh, something that's been ignored by baseball. As Shelby Miller in St. Louis, after Edison Volquez had hit two guys on the foot, Holiday and Adams, and then this was last night, Luis Garcia throwing right at the head of McCutcheon, and he's not too happy about it. I asked Clint Hurdle today about this play. He said he did not believe that Garcia was intentionally throwing at McCutcheon. Well, I, again, the suspensions by baseball, I don't know what they're going to do. That's, that's not my error. I'm talking about a teammate. I'm talking about a pitcher. If he decides in his mind whether he's right or wrong, if he decides it was intentional, then you, you've got to send a message to Andrew. You've got to, if it costs you a game, if it costs you a start, what you know, whatever. You, your first priority is take care of that guy in center field or any one of your teammates that you think is being abused like that. So where baseball takes it is, uh, is not my valley work. But I just know from a personal standpoint that if somebody hits Willie Stargell continually, I'm going to nail somebody. And I can, uh, get thrown out of the game. You get thrown out of the game. It costs us a win. It costs us a win. It's more important for Willie Stargell to know somebody's got his back. So it's a, it's a personal thing. By each personal pitcher, I think more than what the manager says, what Major League Baseball says, I think it gets down to your pitchers with a McCutcheon or, or any other Pirates that uh, gets targeted like that. Well, Justin Wilson against the Dodgers sent a little message, and teammates appreciated it. Yeah. Justin took care of business. That's going to last a lot longer. Uh, than, than anything else that's going to happen. You, uh. So Gabby Sanchez at the plate with one out. Time to the flying out to Kalish and right. Wada's pitch. And Gabby hits this one to the gap in right center field. That one is going to be caught by Kalish and dropped. A double for Sanchez. What an effort by Kalish to get there. Looked like he had no chance whatsoever, and he got a glove on. It yep. looked like we'll see the replay, obviously, but it looks like he had the ball contained for a moment. Maybe the impact, maybe on the way down, will slow it down and, and get a good look at it. But you're right, terrific, terrific effort on a ball that was well hit, kind of slicing back to him a little bit, but comes back up without the ball in the glove. He's got it in his glove, and right there it falls out. Yep. See those, those big long webs will close around, but that was way out on the way out on the tip. This couldn't complete the securing. Well, Travis Snyder batting. But 18th double for Sanchez, but give Kalish a lot of credit. I mean, just to get there from where that ball was hit, but he had it in the webbing. But the Pirates with one out have a runner in scoring position. And Watt is going to face what? His only left hand batter. He's done very good work against lefties, but he's only got one to pick on tonight. Pick off attempt, and Gabby will be safe. Yeah, in fact, this year, left handed hitters are only six for 42 against Wada, and all six of those hits are singles. Another ball comes out of the glove. He's safe anyway. But... There's a lineup. Yeah, you can win with that trio. Nothing in one. The count to Snyder. Now it's 0 and 2. That ball is cut away from Travis. He's got the standard issue: left-hander sweeping breaking ball. And if Marte was able to go tonight, it'd be an all-right-handed lineup. The hand and the uh, and the arm hit the arm yesterday. Just not ready tonight. No balls, two strikes. Oh, Side one and two. Well, Starling sitting this one out for now. He can certainly run, play the field. It's the hitting that's giving him an issue right now. Grabbing the bat, squeezing it. One two pitch to Snyder. 
But, you know, if you are continually going to let yourself get hit, and a lot of players do that, eventually you're going to do some damage. A lot of, most of them are going to be harmless and shake them off. But, uh, you know, around the hand, a lot of bones there, uh, a lot of small bones, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of guys that make a living out of, you know, almost turning away from the pitch but getting hit a lot, getting down to first base. But uh, eventually you're going to probably have to pay a price. Snyder pulls it to the right side, gets Sanchez to third. Holt will step on the bag. So two men out. Allegheny Health Network injury update. That was against Jerome Williams two games ago. Got him on the hand. And then last night, A.J. Burnett came inside on him and got him on the arm. Yeah, that won't do nearly as much damage as getting down to where you don't have protection. You got a lot of bones on the back of the hand. Well, Steve, the National League Central is baseball's version of the black and blue division. When you look at the top five teams in the National League being hit by a pitch, they're all National League Central Division teams. Uh, retaliation probably got a lot to do with it. Chris Stewart takes a strike. For the 0 1. And Stewart takes inside. One ball and one strike. Stewart, a 282 hitter. Still searching for home run number one. Eight runs batted in. So fairly well in his starts. And the 1 1 coming from Tsuyoshi Wada. Stewart loops this one into right center field back there Watkins and he can't get it ball comes out of his glove Sanchez scores and the Pirates on the board it's one to nothing well you had one that was almost caught in right field a pickoff play a ball was dropped out of the glove and this one gets out of the glove so you got to check the leather with the Cubs Looked like he's going to get it he's there I don't know if it just came out of his glove or maybe the knee came up. Did he kick it out of the glove? No, just never secured it. They've just got to make those gloves longer. <laughs> not that they're not long enough already. All right, Garrett, make him pay some more. Garrett Cole, 222 hitter. Take strike one. So you're telling me that Garrett got all of it when he hit the home run at Wrigley. Oh, he did. He just missed uh, by two rows hitting it out on the Waveland Avenue. What a waste when all you have to do is hit it over the fence. <laughs> yeah, he got all of it. Oh, one. Outside one ball and one strike. Let's take a look, I Steve. Need, I need to see this. Just a little further than the one you hit. He knew it, too. Whoa. Whoa. Very impressive. Way up there in the bleachers. And he got the silent treatment. He had to do the yes, yes, yes by himself. <laughs> and then finally they gave up. And they gave in. And congratulated him. So he didn't get a yes, yes. He got an okay, okay. He didn't get the receiving line. He didn't get anything. For just a little bit. He had to wait for it. And that's what you get in your first major league home run. You get the silent treatment. Yep. Yep. I've even seen it where teams. Where the guys circling the bases, they're all running down the tunnel, getting out of the dugout, come back to an empty dugout. You know, the greatest thing about hitting a home run when you're a pitcher, well, there's a strikeout. The first base coach telling you to take a left instead of peeling back off to the right. Chris Stewart drives in the first run of the ball game. Pirates lead the Cubs 1 0 after two.
PNC Park. This evening, I'm Robbie Insmikowski. We'll speak to young baseball players of Pirates today. Helped an equipment drive uh, for the Baseball Tomorrow Fund to host uh, gently used equipment being delivered. People were stationed at each of the five main gates entering the ballpark tonight, collecting new and gently used equipment. Now, Pirates VP of Communications Brian Warecki said that the Pirates are proud supporters of the Pittsburgh and Bradenton, Florida RBI programs, and their goal is to increase participation and interest in baseball and softball among underserved youth. Now, Jordy Mercer was part of the pregame check presentation, and he told me that he was there at one point as a young kid that could use baseballs, a glove, or even batting gloves. He said he remembers using batting gloves with holes in them when he was a kid. So to be able to get a new pair of gloves can get your confidence up, make you want to be active, and play more baseball. And those are things that are good for you. The equipment drive, Tim and Steve, benefits more than 950 area youth in 10 different communities served by the Pittsburgh RBI program. A great drive took place here before and still right now during the ball game. That is great. That's that's sensational to see those kids being introduced to that kind of gesture that they're giving something that that uh, they've had and have used. That's great. Center fielder Aris Mendy Alcantara at the plate. He's a switch hitter batting left. And tightening up his laces. Got to keep yep. those laces tight. Dr. Glove. Yep. You got to oil the laces too, not just the pocket. Keep the leather soft. These guys are ready. Some good leather there. 205 for Alcantara. And he will take a strike there. Two balls, one strike. Contra not only plays center field, he can play in the infield as well. He did play second base one game last weekend in Chicago. And a comebacker through the legs of Cole is safe at first. Alcantara runs well. Ball slowly hit. And that'll be a base hit. First hit off of Garrett Cole tonight. Another ball that just kind of goes under the foot of Garrett Cole. Neil Walker made a good play on one previously. This one gets through the wicket. Mercer doing everything he can, but can't beat speed. He can run a little bit. Seven stolen bases. Jordy did what he could. Well, Contra. Just beat it out. So nobody out man aboard for the second baseman Logan Watkins. He's the eighth hitter in the Cubs order. Ball one to Watkins. Three twenty five on Watkins just one home run. Five runs batted in a lot of guys up from. Triple A. Cubs are in developmental mode here in the month of September. Yeah, not a lot of household names. Especially with Rizzo and Castro, the anchors of their infield out. Rizzo, back injury, and Castro, an ankle injury. Darwin Barney no longer there. Samarja no longer there. Some of the other familiar names. So, Ricky Renteria. Got to go with the guys he's got. Give them big league time here in September. 1 0 pitch is in the air to center field. Coming on is McCutcheon. Can of corn for him. One out. It's a kids' day this Sunday as the Bucks battle the Cubs at 135. All kids 14 and younger take home Garrett Cole, Fathead Junior, Wall decals. Thanks to Kenna Middle. Make sure to come early for the number one Cochran Family Fun Zone on Federal Street. Stay after the game. Kids get to run the bases. It's presented by Kennywood. For tickets, Pirates.com. Third game of this three-game series. Final meeting with the Cubs this year, Sunday, 1:35. Wada looking to bunt, and he pops up the bunt. He's over the backstop into the seats for strike one. Wada has successfully sacrificed twice this year. Nice seats down there, I know. Yeah, you were down there not long ago in the Alexis Club. What about you? that section, that neighborhood? It would have been fun to. We thought you called just, in sick, and, and it turned out you were just. I did call in sick. You were there with your grandson. Yeah. 
Wayner busted me. Oh, one pitch. Strike. Nothing in two. The ball's two strikes to Wada. Wada is a veteran of international baseball. Helped Japan in the World Baseball Classic in 06. Was off the Japanese Olympic team in 2004 and 2008. Face out of the way. <laughs> One and two, the count cold. Get those Can hands you? away from being around the bat. Get them in back of the bat when you're going to bunt. You don't want to break your fingers. fingers. Yep. Yeah, the fingers of water are in a dangerous spot. Yep. Some guys get broken fingers. Broken fingers <laughs> by trying to bunt with their, their fingers around the bat. Look right there. Is out on strikes. Fourth strikeout for Garrett Cole. Time again on our broadcast to ask you to send in your photo and show us how you raise the Jolly Roger. The fun places you watch the games on Root Sports. Show us how you display your pirate prize. Submit a picture via Twitter using the hashtag BucksFanPhoto for a chance to have them shown during our telecast. Looking forward to seeing your submissions tonight. Two outs, runner aboard is Alcantara. Back to the top of the order for the Cubs and Chris Coglin. Coglin grounded out to Walker first time up. Nothing in one now to Coglin. First base continually. Just missed off the corner. Well, Garrett now pitching well when it counts, when you need a heater <laughs> this time of the year. And he had two stints on the disabled list, and he is back and pitching full blast. Well, the thing is, I, I think when you look down the barrel of these last 16 games, look at a couple of things. First of all, you're not tired. Adrenaline, adrenaline should be working right now. Everybody should be really fired up. Plus, I think it lays on the starting pitchers, gets it to the late innings of the ball game, so your, so your your main guys can come in and, and hold the fort, get your team into the seventh inning if you can. Set the tone. Don't force your guys to be playing catch up baseball. Starters are going to. I think carry the day and he couldn't have been better last night. It's as good maybe as we've seen it. This slider, control of a ball game. slider was terrific last night. He kept on going to the well with the slider and it was working. Yeah. Didn't have to throw as many change ups. As good as we've seen him I think. 2 1 from Cole to Coglin. Runner goes ground ball toward Walker. He backhands throws to first and got him. No runs ahead, a man left. Through two and a half, Pirates one, Cubs nothing.
Root Sports is brought to you by Toyota. Now's the time to go places with Toyota. Visit buyatoyota.com for special offers. And by PNC Bank. Know where you stand with PNC Total Insight. Let's go, Box. A gorgeous night here at PNC Park. Mid September. Temperatures cooling off. Jackets are coming on. And the Pirates have been winning. It's a Jay Hay kind of day. Oh, they're all He's Jay one Hay for kind one. of days. Jay Hay leading off. Pirates with a 1 0 lead over the Cubs, bottom of the third inning. Jay Hay kind of here. Wada delivers. Breaking ball in for a strike. This Wada's put together a little bit. I, I, guys, I think the Pearson, maybe a Ted Lilly kind of. Bill, it might be a little more slight than uh, Ted Lilly. One ball, one strike. Good. Kind of proves you can pitch in the big leagues without being six foot seven, weighing 240. One and two. In Japan, he's spun 36 complete games, and he had eight shutouts. Went 106 and 60. Oh, I'm sorry, 107 and 61 in 210 starts for Fukuoka. Where he still makes his home. And he was the Nippon Professional Baseball most valuable player in 2010. Sounds like he kind of knows what he's doing. Yep, he's got some experience, but considered a rookie this year. Okay, he follows this one back. Continuing to stay hot right in the thick of that batting race. It's fun to watch this. Not only having one player in it, but two players in it. Touching also. It gets down to cases, doesn't it? When uh, you uh, you get a hit and you gain one point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's that's when it starts to be a grind. So get a base hit here. Maybe you get a point and you tie more. No. Outside count full three and two. Jay has hit safely in each of his last seven home games. Twelve for twenty nine. It's four twenty nine average. Payoff pitch. Both of these pitchers known for their control. Wada, as we said, ten starts, just fourteen walks. Garrett Cole, last two starts, twelve strikeouts, three walks. That helps. This one looped into left center field. It is going to get down for a hit. Of course. What do you say, Jay Hayes? Two for two. 317, 317, maybe. Another leadoff single for Harrison and on a special inside Pirates baseball. See Josh Harrison's magical rise from bench player to National League All Star and everyday third baseman. A one man highlight show. Harrison's physical gifts, savvy moves, and unbreakable confidence were once honed back by two talented older brothers. But now it's his turn to shine. Catch it all on Inside Pirates Baseball. Jay Hay every day, Wednesday after post game on Root Sports. Let's see if Jordy can hit the ball as hard as it did first time up when it was turned into a double play. Now, Buena playing close to the line again. Third baseman who made the play on him, an outstanding play. And Valbuena is very good at reaching across his body, making that backhand pick. Yeah, and it really looked like, times. like that ball was hit so hard, but it came up on him also. It just made it doubly difficult. Terrific play. One ball, no strikes. Mercer time. Two sixty for Jordy, eleven homers. Most home runs by a pirate shortstop since Jack Wilson hit eleven in two thousand seven. First base. 
Harrison gets back. Josh at 317 is tied Morno. Two hits and he only gains three points. That's it's a tough league. Now he gained two points with the first hit, but he only gained one point with the next hit. We might have to call New York and get maybe get a little more research done on those numbers. You want to have them review it? Yeah. Get, get the headphones. Well, what Josh has been doing is pretty clear and convincing. Two and zero to Jordy Mercer. One nothing Pirates. Bottom of the third inning. Pirates with five hits comes with one. Mercer lifts this one in the left field. That's down for a hit. Back to back singles to start the third for the Buckos. So he hits a rocket, turns into a double play, hits the ball off the piss, gets himself a knock. Baseball. Two on and nobody out. And the batter, Andrew McCutcheon. Cutches one for one. See if he can raise his average up. Wouldn't it be great? Wouldn't it be just terrific if we're sitting here in the last weekend of the season in Cincinnati and it's between McCutcheon and Harrison yep, we for get, the batting time? Yeah, we got the division secured. We're, we're going to win the division and let's go, these two guys. Let, let them go individually head to head. His pitch and Kutch hits this one well to left field. Going back on it is Coglin who'll make the catch. And the runners back to second and first, respectively. Kutch is one home run shy of tying Jason Bay for the most number of home runs here at PNC Park. Knows he didn't get it. He missed it. No, no right away. He's got 60 home runs in this ballpark. They had 61. Just a matter of time for McCutcheon, though. Harrison at second base, Mercer at first, and one out. And that's from last year when McCutcheon was on the cover of Sports Illustrated, the uh, new Sports Illustrated. That has him on the cover. Great read if you haven't taken a look at it. Strike one to Walker. You think along these lines, Wada has given up just six home runs in his ten starts. Low number of home runs given up, but also a low number of starts. So a little bit vulnerable. Harrison back to second. Last time the Pirates had two players in the top five in the National League batting race. They go back to 1984, Steve, when Lee Lacey and Johnny Ray were in it. Lacey was second, Ray was fifth. Oh, and two to Neal. And you're seeing some fastballs. But again, not to beat it up, they're, they're somewhat average around 90, but you're seeing late swings and they're not seeing the ball quickly enough to make up their mind. But they're seeing it late. They're seeing the fastball delivered late, and so it's prompting some late swings. Base hit to center field. Harrison around third. He'll score. Walker drives in a run. Two nothing Pirates. Nice job by Neal. Waiting on that ball. Just a little soft served into center field. Down 
downstairs, waiting, going down low. Just getting enough. RBI number 66 for Walker. Real comfortable trip in for Josh. First and second, still one out. Jose Tabata, the batter. Looking for home run number one here. Uh, Jose did not hit one at the minor league level this year, and he has not hit one at the major league level this year. He has not put one over the fence. It's time. He's overdue. at second base Walker over at first and Neil getting close to a career high in RBI 69 during the 2012 season now with 66 and a ground ball left side Valbuena gloves it goes to second for one top of the beats it at first and Neil Walker made it very very tough on Logan Watkins the second baseman to complete the throw to first that can make the difference. That's why the third base, Balboino, gives the feed and then Neil's doing what he can, as you see there. Bent Lake slide and took out Watkins. Keeps the inning alive now. Sometimes it's the things that you do away from the play or you know, things on the base paths like that that can help. Now, Gabby Sanchez with a chance to drive in Jordy Mercer. Mercer comes in. You look back at that takeout slide. So that was a big thing in the inning by Walker. Plus the hustle of Tabra getting down the line. Gabby Sanchez doubled in the second inning. Ryan Kalish, the right fielder, made a great play to get there. He had the ball in his glove, and it popped out. And Gabby credit for a double, his 18th. Twenty-five of Gabby's 55 hits have gone for extra bases this season. Bit less than half of his hits have been extra base hits. Top it over at first base. So Mercer at third. 1 1 the count to Sanchez. And Gabby hits a bouncer to short. Baez charging. They'll get the force. At second base, Pirates add another one on three hits. They leave two, two nothing Pirates.
Sports is brought to you by the Chevy Sun and your Western PA Chevy dealers. And by Day Automotive, we're going to make your day. Let's go Bucks! Here's our day automotive this day in Pirates history. In 1985, the Bucks beat the Cubs 10-2 at Three Rivers Stadium. R.J. Reynolds and Mike Brown homered off Cubs starter Dennis Eckersley. But the game remained close into the eighth when the Bucks erupted for six runs, capped by a grand slam by reliever Donnie Robinson. Robinson then stayed in and picked up his third save of the season. Two runs on seven hits through three innings. Garrett Cole has struck out four through his first three innings of work. We'll start at the top of the fourth. Rolling over Chicago tonight, the Root Sports side. Hope so. Javier Baez struck out swinging in the first. It'll be Baez, Valbuena, and Castillo, two, three, and four in the Chicago Cubs order. On the inside corner to Baez. Baez actually twisted an ankle a little bit in the series against the Pirates in Chicago on one of his swings. He's in the hole 0 and 2. Those kind of swings, you might want to think about throwing it slower and slower and slower. Let him spin himself right into the ground. That, you know, when he finished that swing, his head was heading out McKnight Road. That's how far out in front he was. That's a direct left from here, by the way. Was shaking off Stewart and accepts the sign. The 0 2 is up and in. That's good. See, that's uh, you're, you're you're looking at. Maybe a, a classic case. A couple of breaking balls. Now show him the high fastball. Are we going to go soft again? No. Looks like fastball outside. No fastball. Spot. Okay. Stewart wanted it outside, but Garrett missed up. Let's see if they go back to the breaking ball. Yep. Captain Hook. Fires fouls it back to the count even two and two. I think after those two fastballs, Garrett could have wound up and just held on to the ball, pretend he was throwing it. Uh, he might have got a swing and a miss. Mr. Cole motoring along very nicely here. He works in the top of the fourth. Baez hits this one well to left field. Snyder going back. He's going to watch it leave the ballpark. And that's the power you talk about with Javier Baez when he connects. He can do that. More often than not, he swings and misses. But he connects and knocks his eighth one out of the yard. And the Cubs on the board, two to one. Take a look at the location. Downstairs a little bit, but right in the middle of the strike zone. And exactly right. A lot of power in that swing when he makes contact. Lead off home run. That's the tenth home run that Cole has given up this season. You know, you, in, in hindsight, it's easy to say, but you've thrown a couple fastballs in. I don't know if you ever want to throw the breaking ball in the strike zone because he's going to chase so much. But, uh, sometimes it just doesn't go out of the strike zone. You leave it there. Sometimes you get hurt. Well, when we saw Baez hit in Chicago, you didn't have to throw strikes to get him to strike out. And well, that was the case his first bat yeah, here. Exactly. Popped up. Harrison foul ground has a play on it. One out. Blaine is out. He's 0 for 2. The most popular way to follow the Pirates' push to the postseason is with MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. Enjoy live look ins, replay reviews, scores, live radio broadcasts, the MLB.tv game of the day, and more. Get at bat for your smartphone or tablet on the App Store or visit MLB.com. 
Arlington Castillo takes a strike. He bounced out to Walker at second base to lead off the second inning. And the hole 0 and 2. a fastball. This is popped up. Chris Stewart watching it as it just goes into the the elevator that is right next to the Cubs dugout. If you've ever wondered what that was over there, that's an elevator. To Castillo. Couldn't get the chase, and the count is one and two. Javier Baez with the home run this inning gets the Cubs on the board. Pirates up 2 1. Tim, we had a little outing out at the uh, Monroeville Convention Center last night. The folks from the business community of Monroeville gathering, great event. And uh, I have to apologize. I met a, a young lady, uh, well, a uh, young veteran lady that uh, Pirate fan for a lot of years, celebrating birthday. Helen, happy birthday. I can't remember your last name. Sorry. Ground ball to Walker. Two out. Castillo's 0 for 2. Totally embarrassed by that. I know, but you only meet three or four people a year. How can you not forget a name? Well, I wrote it down. I, I forgot to bring my information in the mailbag. I got a lot of, a lot of mail, a lot of uh, information to share tomorrow night. We'll get it all together. But Helen, happy birthday! Very nice lady, great pirate fan for a lot of years. There's a souvenir. How about that? Great shot. And Kalish takes a strike. Kalish struck out looking in the second inning. 240 is his average. He made the Cubs opening day roster and then was sent back to AAA in May. And a line drive right. Snyder. One run on the home run by Baez. 2 1 Pirates lead after three and a half. Root Sports Classics, Jay Bell, Rich Donnelly, Ray Miller, Bob Walk, Jim Leland, and Doug Drabeck 
share their memories from Game 1 of the Pirates-Reds 1990 NLCS. Hear their stories while watching the Bucks win their first postseason game since 1979. Sweet win in Cincy, Monday at 7 on Root Sports Classics. When you think about the postseason, Pirates right now, the season finished today, Steve, we'd be heading to San Francisco for the wild card game. But still plenty of time left. 15 games after tonight. Pirates two and a half behind the Cardinals. Cardinals and Rockies just underway from St. Louis. And the Brewers and Reds playing right now in Milwaukee, and the Reds up one nothing early. And Travis Snyder takes a strike. Told you about Adam Wainwright going for the Cardinals. De La Rosa, 13-game winner, going for the Rockies. He's been a, a bright spot in a dismal Rockies season. But the focus for the Pirates in that clubhouse is still on winning the division. It's not on any consolation prize. They have never taken their eyes off a division title. That's the main thing. Clint Hurdle's job is to keep these guys focused. He talks about focus all the time, focus on preparing for the team they're playing that night. He has kept this team very focused and prepared. Josh Harrison already two for two tonight. It's been a, a big reason for the Pirates success this year. The Pirates have had a lot of action seven hits so far a couple of runs to show for it. Two two to Snyder. All right now you look at the Central Division standings and the wild card picture. Over on the right, the strength of the remaining schedule. So the Pirates right ahead of Atlanta, San Francisco, and Milwaukee with St. Louis on top. As far as Pirates' remaining games, let's see the check swing here by Snyder. Allegheny Health Network Super Mall able to hold up. Ah, yes. Okay. Starting them early on the chicken boots. Roll upstairs. And down to first base goes Snyder. On the first free pass issued in the ball game. Payoff pitch pays off for Travis. All getting away from Wada. Well, check swing was a good thing. It was not called. <laughs> Snyder aboard, nobody out. Chris Stewart. Stewart with an RBI base hit. One for one. There's a strike to him. Well, coming into tonight, Steve, Pirates, 16 games left, and nine of those 16 games, including this one tonight, coming against National League Central teams, nine of the remaining 16 to be played at home, nine of the 16 also coming against teams with losing records. So if you beat the teams, uh, you know, the, the proverbial quote, if you beat the teams you're supposed to beat, you'll be all right. Yeah, that, that's supposed to phrase is <laughs> an interesting phrase. Well, this is baseball. Yeah. <laughs> tough to. Anything can happen on any night. Yep. Tough to beat a major league team. Simple as that. Eric Cole on deck. Nobody out. No balls. Two strikes to Stewart. Ball two strike. It's the old phrase. Uh, everybody in the big leagues, there for a reason. They're all capable of achieving, succeeding. Every team is capable of winning. This comes down to who does it most often. Simple as that. They're all capable. Of 
School one and two on Stewart. I'd like to see Chris find a way to get on base. Let Garrett Cole run him over. See if we can get some action going here in the bottom of the fourth inning. My first time at PNC Park. It looks like he's enjoying it. A great memory for him. Yeah. Have some fun, young man. Stewart lifts this one down the left field line. On the run is Coglin. And he will not make the catch. He runs out of room. The ball tailed into the seats. And he had a lot of room to run. He was way over toward left center field. So that, that left field corner is available if you can turn on something. We'll head back across the pasture. There he is starting way over by that red sign. Finally running out of room. And he's still over there. There's still a lot of that left field corner if you can turn on it. Well, chopper down to third, swinging bunt. Valbuena bare hands, throws. He got it. Well, has Luis Valbuena been playing some defense tonight? Very nice play. Well, it moves the runner over to second. Snyder safely at second with one out. Bare hand pickup and an accurate throw. That's a top notch play. He made that look easier than it was. Throwing off one foot, off balance. You got to get something on it, and it's got to be accurate. And he did all of that. Nice camera work. Super Mo, Allegheny Health Network. Good shots. Chad, thank you. Eric Cole with an RBI chance. Nothing in one. Snyder, a leadoff walk. He's at second base. Cole struck out his first time up. Average dipped a few points. Went from 222 down to 216. Not respecting his power at all. Now, Coughlin in left field, not respecting his power. Yeah, it's shallow and left. I don't think Garrett hasn't noticed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that, I mean, that's a personal insult. One ball, one strike. Ships out on nighttime maneuvers behind the ballpark. Yep. The mighty Allegheny. Foul tip and Castillo hangs on and striking out for the second time tonight is Garrett Cole. Get on board with Pirates Baseball in 2015. All aboard now. Pirates are accepting deposits for full and partial season ticket memberships. Get access to exclusive events, the best locations, and savings. Plus, customize your own membership. For more information, go to pirates.com slash membership. Time to get on board now. So two men out and one man on. And here is Josh Harrison, who's two for two. See if Josh can pick up an RBI. Pitch outside for a ball. Just raise it. Pretty simple. simple as that. Just raise it. Since July 1st, Harrison is hitting 350 against left handed pitching. It's fifth best in the National League. 2 0 to Josh. Pirates with a two to one lead. The Cubs have lost a season high tying six in a row. 
And during their six game losing streak Steve they have been outscored 48 to 10. Including giving up at least eight runs in their last four games. Mm. Three and oh to Josh. So Rick Renteria's team is in a spot here in mid September. They have 82 losses that guaranteed of a non winning season of 64 and 82. The diehards still continue to watch the cover cubbies though. Well, they've beaten somebody 64 times. Uh, I'm not certainly satisfied with that, but they must have taken for granted. Let's see the cubby logo on that blue jacket. Stand out at PNC Park. Oh, yeah. He runs up high ball for Harrison aboard. Two walks in the inning for Shiyoshi Iwata. Now, Steve, here we are in mid September, and we see the atmosphere here. This is just game one of a nine game homestand. You got the Red Sox coming in Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and there are still tickets remaining for that Red Sox series, folks. You want to come out for the last dose of interleague baseball, but uh, again, as the Pirates continue the push to the pennant, come see them at PNC Park. The atmosphere is, as you see, just going to get better and better as the Pirates continue to put up wins. Yep. It's a great atmosphere to be a part of. Jordy Mercer with two on and two out. And the Pirates can certainly set a tone by winning this first game of the homestand. They've been away a long time. Pirate fans eager to have their buckos back in town. Great turnout tonight. We're going to have close to 35,000 in the barn. So uh, come on out and be a part of that. Get this first W, Garrett. Put it in the books for us. Mercer, ground ball up the middle. Base hit. Here comes Snyder around third. He'll score standing up. Jordy Mercer, an RBI single, and the Pirates lead it three to one. Nicely done as Jordy, like Neil Walker, just seemed to kind of wait on that, just hit it, slap it back through the middle. Plenty of time for Travis to get around. Mercer's two for three. Ground ball that finds the hole. Drop the hammer on it, Andrew. Break it open. 51st RBI for Mercer. Snyder motoring around third. Two on and two out for Andrew McCutcheon. He is one for two. To hit the lefties. This one is hit up in the air to right field and playable for Kalish. Pirates will leave two. They get one on the RBI base hit by Jordy Mercer.
havoc in the first inning against his former team. In the standings right now, Pirates trailing the cards by two and a half, and the Rockies having a, a, a miserable season in Denver. So the Cardinals beginning a home stand against a team very much struggling in the National League Western Division, the last place team in the West, right along with Arizona tied for the basement. Rather rude guest in the first inning of the Cardinals. Mike Old, the first baseman, takes a strike, one ball, one strike. Well, Cincinnati can help out the Buckos tonight, put some distance between themselves and Milwaukee. Since you with an early lead. Cincinnati did help the Pirates a little bit this week, taking three of four from the Cardinals. Mm -hmm. Johnny Cueto, Jay Bruce, and Aroldis Chapman helping out the Bucks yesterday. Bruce robbing Matt Adams of a home run. Johnny Cueto pitching a gem against Lance Lynn and a one nothing Reds win over St. Louis yesterday afternoon. Mr. Cole slinging some heat up there. Cutchin fan. Down on strikes goes Old Stewart goes down to first. Strikeout and two three goes the put up. Let's take a look at tonight's Barrel Automotive League leaders stat where the Pirates pitching ranks in the National League since August 20th. A record 13 and 7. That's second. Starters ERA. Bullpen ERA first. And ground ball to fly ball first. And strikeouts per nine second. I like that reliever number because games are going to be handed to them most of the time. You want your pen to be strong for the stretch. A cast of thousands. This, the uh, seven losses were by a total of eight runs. And Alcantara hits this one deep, and that one is gone. Arismendi Alcantara with his ninth home run. He has two hits off of Garrett Cole, and Cole has given up two solo home runs. It's now three to two. That was rather abrupt. That's right. Well, I thought that was a little further in. He just reached out and turned it back around. That's pretty impressive. That ball is out of way. Did a fan reach over? The question Clint Hurdle wants answered. We'll get a good look here. Uh, looks like it was going to be gone anyway. I don't think he reached over far enough. Clint wanting a conference. This would have to be a crew chief review. So Clint trying to convince him to at least look at it. And it wouldn't cost him a, his challenge if he would lose it because it would be a crew chief review. Boy, he is really hurting with that hip, isn't he? When you watch Clint make the trip out to leave a pitcher. Or... He told me the other day that 72 hours after the season ends, whenever it ends, he will get a hip replacement. So the crew chief, Ted Barrett, will take a look at this, or we'll ask the folks in New York to take a look at it, actually. We'll take a look at. It. I thought it was high enough, Steve. Didn't you? I I did. First look. I don't know if it would ever help if they replace that that uh, chain link fencing with something solid, uh, so you don't see the you know see the action behind it. And maybe get confused by what's in front and what's behind. So after the crew chief review, the call has been confirmed. It is a home run for Aris Mendy Alcantara. And it is a three to two ball game now. So that RBI base hit by Jordy Mercer proving rather useful in the bottom of the fourth. Eleven home runs given up by Cole now on the season. One out and Logan Watkins the batter, the second baseman, takes strike one. Pop 
Watch this one up. Jay Hayes got a play on it. Two down. Chris Stewart spinning away like he should. Harrison having a better angle coming in. Now with two outs, the batter is the pitcher, so Yoshiwana. Wana struck out trying to bunt in the third. Only three hits for the Cubs, but two of them have been over the fence. They do have some good young prospects. There's no doubt that the Cubs have been restocking the cupboards. Two strikes on Wada quickly. But whether or not they're fully major league ready for a full season will remain to be seen. And still doing some damage. Alcantara and Baez. Baez with eight home runs. Alcantara with nine. Alcantara has done it in just 58 games. Baez with eight home runs in 36 games. It's a good home run, right? Talked about his strikeout rate, though. Pretty high. Yes. 2 2 and Wada's out. Go back to basics with the heat. Strikeout number six for Garrett Cole. 3 2 Pirates. Standard American food for players to eat before and after games provided by the clubhouse staff. There's also a quiet network that features food from another country involving some of those gentlemen. Players from the Dominican Republic provide food from their country to visiting players in the other clubhouse. Now, Francisco Liriano partakes in this, and he told me that his pregame meal when he pitched last weekend in Chicago, it was Dominican food provided by Pedro Strope and Starling Castro. Now, tonight, Liriano returned the favor, sending over some rice and beans, some chicken, and something that's called Sancocho. It's a soup with meat, chicken, and sausage, very popular in the Dominican Republic. Now, last week, it was Starling Castro, that guy that sent Liriano and Volquez what they call mango for breakfast at Wrigley last Sunday. Now, that is egg, cheese, plantains, red onion, and avocado, another popular dish. Now, the tradition, get this, Tim and Steve. It was started by Vladimir Guerrero, who had his mother cook for him during his 16-year career in the big leagues. So he decided to just share the, uh, share the wealth with his teammates and his fellow countrymen. And that legacy still carries on to this day. Now, this is not just between the Pirates and the Cubs. This is something that goes on between Dominican players. 
all throughout big league baseball. Pretty cool thing that not a lot of people might know about. Yeah, and I know uh, you and I were watching him eat the mango the other day, and sometimes other players, uh, not of Dominican descent, get to try. Get, Garrett it, Cole sat down and, get, and had a, a plate of it. Garrett Cole sat down. It was Pimentel, Volquez, Liriano, and Marte. And Garrett Cole went in and took one of them. That was obviously a limited supply, and they were all pre planned. And Garrett went and asked the other guys, hey, can I get some? And he ate it quicker than the Dominican guys did. Said it was great. Well, you got to get to the point where you start serving some chicharron de pollo, which is a, a chicken, uh, like almost like wings. Had a lot of that uh, in winter ball a lot of years ago. Chicharron de pollo. Walker pops this one up. Baez has it. And Neil is one for three. One out in the fifth for the Pirates. There's another dish, uh, Dominican dish that uh, got used to down there. Uh, it was called cerveza. Uh, yeah, I've heard of that liquid diet, right? Mm -hmm. Every cerveza, every sandwich yeah. is a, every every cerveza is a sandwich. So <laughs> it's well fed, well fed and hydrated, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would say Tabata looked like he wanted to bunt. One and O oh. is the count to Jose Tomato. Sign store had a special tonight. And the 1 0 oh coming. Tomato to right field. Kalish on the run. Kalish back. He reaches up. He won't get it. Kicks it away. Tomato around second. Heading for third base is Jose Tomato. And he is in safely. Well, Kalish got hung up after the ball got away. Didn't bounce straight back, bounced sideways back toward the foul line. Creating the opportunity for Jose. He goes back off the glove and then kind of kicks it twice. And this is plenty of time for Jose. Off the tip of the glove once again. And could have been a heck of a soccer move. Just doesn't. Play well in baseball. Jose motored around second and into third for his second triple of the season. And the three base salute by Tomlin. And if he had kicked it one more time in right field, he might have got that first home run inside the park <laughs> variety. Well, we've had one of those this week. Yeah. Mr. McCutcheon. McCutcheon's in Philadelphia, which is just awesome to watch. So, man at third base, one out, infield in for the Cubs. Well, Wayne chatting with Tabata. Ricky Renteria is going to come out and get water, it looks like. Justin Grimm being set to make his 100th major league appearance. Right hander. Looks like he'll be called upon. He will be. So Siyoshi Wada chased by the Jose Tabata triple. Pirates threatening in the bottom of the fifth.
Sports is brought to you by Barrel Automotive. We're driven to be better. And by Levin Mattress, located in all Levin furniture showrooms and freestanding stores. Let's go box. Pirates with a 3-2 lead, bottom of the fifth inning. Friday Night Lights in Pittsburgh. Another first Pirates game. And his 100th Major League appearance, Justin Grimm, making his 68th appearance this season. So the majority of them have come this season. Strikeout manpower pitcher, 63 innings, 66 strikeouts. How about this? Neon Knights. A nuclear boat. That's power. Kind of cool. <laughs> so Jose Tabla, his first triple since the 1st of May at Baltimore against the Orioles. And Ike Davis with the infield in. Davis and Grimm have not faced one another before. Davis hitting for Gabby Sanchez. A chance to add another. Each run becomes more and more important. The Cubs have been scratching back. Two solo homers, one by Baez, one by Alcantara. It's Friday. Two 32 average for Ike. Does that one go for a strike? One ball and one strike. Is there a more patient hitter on this ball club than Ike Davis? No. As a pinch hitter, he will get deep into counts. And he's a good hitter with two strikes. Grimm's 1 1. Davis now 1 2. A couple of soft deliveries and a 95 mile an hour heat for Mr. Grimm. Gabby Dunn, the right handed hitter out. Now that the right handed pitcher is in, the left handed hitting first baseman. Mike Davis at the plate, one ball, two strikes. In the dirt, two and two. Other games we're keeping an eye on for you tonight. Atlanta is in Texas tonight. Interleague play, one nothing Braves. Top of the third inning. Later in San Francisco, the Giants hosting the Dodgers. That is a key series in the National League West. With the Giants trailing the Dodgers by two games. Grimm has thrown seven wild pitches. He got a save from Castillo in the previous delivery. Mike to left field. Tabata back to tag up. Diving catch. And Tabata heading to the plate. He'll score. And Ike got him in. Four to two. Cogden with a nice catch to record the out. And Tabata able to get back to third and tag up. Not that deep, but a very awkward situation, obviously. And then no chance. So uh, Mike did a good job of not hitting it too far. Well, that run is charged to Wada. That closes the book on him. Four earned runs for Suyoshi Wada tonight. It's back with a two run lead. And I know that Travis Snyder. Snyder walked and scored in the fourth. And grounded out to the first baseman, Olt, in the second. Seven. That was a scramble for Tabata to get back to third base in time to tag up, and get on in. Way outside. Two and one. That's a tough one, too, because you don't know if it's going to drop in for a hit. You got to play it safe. So he saw that ball sinking, went back to third base, got his foot on the bag, and as soon as 
Conlon got a glove on it. He took off for the plate. Yeah, it was a touch and go. I'm getting back there in time. No appeal. Foul ball. Let's watch him on a split screen here. Top of the back. Well, looks like he held the bag. Might have been looking back, just wondering if that ball was trapped or not. It was not. It was caught. But top of the might have been thinking, well, is that a possibility? Either way, if it do, was, he's yeah, got to run. Well, you do the right thing. You go back and tag up. Two to Snyder. Snyder in a deep count against Justin Grimm. And coming in for Suyoshi Wada, the triple of Jose Tabata chasing the Cubs starter out of the ball game. Pirates with four runs on nine hits. Cubs two runs on three hits. And Snyder down on strikes. One run. One hit. Garrett Cole and the Pirates with a two run lead after five. PNC Park with Steve Blass and Robbie Smikowski. I'm Tim Neffert. Four to two. Pirates leading the Cubs in game one of this three game weekend set. Mike Davis pinch hitting. Got to run in with the sacrifice fly. He remains in the game at first base. Left fielder Chris Coglin, leadoff man, takes the pitch up for a ball. One to know. Coglin is 0 for 2. He's grounded out to Neil Walker at second base twice. So far, just a couple of mistakes by Garrett Cole, but they were costly mistakes. He's only given up the three hits. They're in the corner for a strike. Good looking pitch by Garrett. Well, Condon liked it very much, but Cole certainly did. Now it's a two strike count. I kind of understand why Chris Condon maybe didn't like that second pitch, dude. Yeah. A little bit long away. Not reviewable. <laughs> no. What if I came to you tomorrow and said, hey, Steve, breaking news. Now that's reviewable. Going back to Connecticut. <laughs> <laughs> that, that would be the final straw, wouldn't it? <laughs> they take you back? Well, I was just back there, yeah. Okay. It's kind of kind of neat. I can go back now. 
the first two years I played in the big leagues, I went back home after the season, went in the post office, and my buddy said, where you been all summer? <laughs> so things have changed. Been busy. One, two. Conlon, did he hold it? Yes, he did. Ted Barrett, crew chief on the appeal. Yeah. But, uh, Cole wanted to get it. And the 2 2. Just outside three and two. By the way, had a very successful uh, charity golf tournament for my high school back there uh, this past Monday on the 8th. Well attended. Great turnout. Thank all the folks that might be able to catch our broadcast. Pay off pitch. Fouled off. Well, they had a, a, a number of years ago, they had a Steve Blast Day in your hometown. Yeah. A lot of years ago. Hey, tenants and everything. Yeah. Oh, the whole stuff. deal. How about this evening in Pittsburgh as you take a look at another great turnout here at PNC Park. Great, great response. Shot foul right off the front of the pirate dugout. Great crowd, expecting great crowds this weekend. And you want to check on pirates.com, be part of the atmosphere down here. Ball club and this ballpark is civic treasure, and you need to come down and experience it during a pennant race. Garrett has not walked a batter tonight. Still hasn't. And he did not walk a man the last time he faced the Cubs on Sunday. Six plus didn't walk a batter. Entering his sixth inning of work now. And again, the 3 2 to Chris Coglin, the left fielder for Chicago. Oh! Mm. And that is the first walk issued by Cole. Did he catch the corner? That was the question. Let's look. Missed it by that much. Sometimes you get that call. A lot of times you get that call. It didn't happen there. Well, Coughlin worked a 10 pitch at bat. And you see uh, Derek Cole's teammates. They, they know he gets he gets amped up, revved up, so frustrated with a couple of those calls. The other guys coming in and say, okay, all right, on we go. First base and Javier Baez takes upstairs. Baez took pull deep in the fourth inning. He struck out swinging in the first. Hitting just 176. And Cubs president Theo Epstein said in the papers last week in Chicago they're going to let him, despite his 170s average, continue to go the rest of the way and try to figure things out at the big league level, take it through the winter. Try to carry what he learns in a spring training in Arizona next February, March. I feel this experience for him will be invaluable. And, you know, sometimes I can go two ways. <laughs> if you don't do well, it can really affect your confidence. There's that big cut. But at the same time, he has had some successes to look back on. Eight home runs, 16 RBIs in a short period of time. I'm a big believer in winter ball because it helped me so much. <laughs> There's the one two. In the air to center. McCutcheon calling for it. And there is one out. Go back to Dan Potash in our Root Sports studios for this game break. Some help from the Rangers, perhaps tonight. Rangers have had their worst season in quite some time, but 
You never know these kind of uh, teams. They got a lot of younger players. They want to be a spoiler at this time of the year. There's a foul win at the plate. Throw goes to first base and Conlon back. Wild card standings. Brewers a game and a half back. Braves two back. The Marlins five and a half back. Look ahead to next weekend. Three with Milwaukee head to head right here at PNC Park. How about down the road? But four in Atlanta? Four in Atlanta right after that. And Garrett taking a little something off there. Nice delivery. So some things can be decided before the Pirates leave home after this nine game home stand. You'd like it to where that four game series in Atlanta won't mean as much. But Bucks would need some help from the teams playing the Braves. Stewart with a bluff down to first base and diving back is Coglin. In the best case scenario, you'd like it so that series in Cincinnati at the end of the season means nothing. But like last year, it did mean something. It meant home field. And the Pirates went into Cincinnati and swept them. Norm Crosby would have said it's you want to make it irreverent. <laughs> well, Whoa! First throw away. He gets back. Well, he broke early. He, he, he uh, figured out a on back. Come on back. Watch the break. He's off to. Oh no! <laughs> you don't. You don't get back very often on those kind of things. Well, watch the left foot. It gets there and Ike on the sweet tag. One ball, one strike to Valbuena. Well, Coglin with thoughts about. Trying to swipe second base. Coglin has stolen six bases. He's been thrown out four times. Two and one to Valbuena. Sometimes that's the best time to go after a gaffe like that. that you get away with thinking, okay. They're thinking I'm not going to go because I almost got picked off. Sometimes you see players after a mistake like that take off, thinking they're going to catch somebody off guard. Well, one thing that Garrett Cole continues to work on, and the Pirates staff continues to work on with all their pitchers, controlling the running game. I'll keep those runners at first base, and if you've got guys that can steal bases. Uh, and get that ball to the plate quickly. Yeah, and you, you can see the results too because Russell Martin once again up over that 30 percent, and that's the it's kind of the benchmark, right around 35 percent. So he's getting some help from his pitchers, doing his usual fine job. The first and Coglin safe. Close play. Jeff Bannister. Calling back to the video room to see what they thought of this. Again, a flinch. Tag up around the elbow. That was the hand there in time. Apparently so. Two balls, two strikes, one out, one on. And again, a pretty Legitimate lead by Bachman. Garrett's going to take a look. That's the toughest thing for these umpires to see where the hand is and where the tag is applied on the body. In other words, the hand can be on the base, the tag is up on the arm. That's that's a tough look for an umpire. With a looper to left field, and Snyder will have to play it on a couple of hops. Coglin stopped. Ball got by Snyder for a second, but not far enough where Conlon could advance. So a broken bat base hit for Valbuena. Now the Cubs with two on and one out. And just to finish up that little thought about the umpiring, so many slides now as you watch the base hit off the end of the bat. 
somebody slides their hand first so it's not like you're coming in you know with with, with the both feet going toward the bag a little easier to look at now Ray Sears going to go out and discuss this and Garrett Cole is visibly frustrated right now first person to recognize that always going to be Ray Searage. Very good. Castillo coming up with a forced play. Castillo, the catcher, does not run very well. And surprisingly, he's only hit into seven double plays or grounded into seven double plays. But he would be a Perfect. double play candidate considering Perfect. the fact he's grounded out to Neil Walker twice already tonight. Perfect, Perfect candidate. Garrett with his feet back on the ground gets settled in. With John Holscomb getting up. Well, I'm anxious to see him because I was out in the wilderness of Connecticut. I, didn't, I have not seen him work yet, but uh, I hear wonderful things. Castillo follows this one off down the right side. So Holscomb, who had two stops in independent ball this year, Pirates signed him. Send him to double A. He was there 10 days and they said he needs to be moving up. They send him to triple A. Still so needs to be moving up. Next thing you know, the rosters expand and people say, who? And here he is. And he's done a wonderful job so far. Oh, one pitch. Outside one ball and one strike. He's not appeared in front of a crowd this big ever to pitch in his life. Garrett Cole closing in on the 100 pitch mark. He's up over 90 now. Swing and a miss. Thank you very two. much. Thank you. A wave at that breaking ball. Be difficult to hit that as you take a look at where that ball wound up. Another example of you don't have to throw strikes to get strikes. Yep. Another example of what Bob Prince used to say couldn't hit that one with a bed slap. When Hurdle checking on the availability of Holdscomb. The pitch just outside trying to get him to chase another. And now lefty Bobby Laframboise looks like he's going to start to throw another one of the new addition mid season acquisitions. Actually, he was a late season acquisition. Picked up on waivers from the Padres organization. He has done well. 2 2. Steele fouls it back. Well, you're going to leave nothing in the bag with 16 games to go. Well, for the Pirates, it's all hands on deck the rest of the way. 94 pitches for Cole. His spot in the order in the bottom of the sixth is second. Chances are this will be his final inning. It's possible. And a ground ball up the middle and a base hit. McCutcheon will pick it up, and Coglin's going to score easily. An RBI single for Castillo. It's now four to three. Second straight hit off of Garrett Cole. Forty-first RBI for Castillo on the season. And that pitch way outside, but he slapped it back through the middle. And, uh, we're involved in the ball game. Coglin runs pretty well. He would have had a chance to score even if McCutcheon had a play on that one. Coach has a tendency to play deep. Runners at second base. I believe Garrett's got to get an out here to stay in this ball game. Ryan Kalish, the batter, one out, tying run at second base. So the Pirates add one. Add two, and the Cubs scratch one out. Bucks have never trailed in this game. They have the lead throughout.
ground ball to first base. Davis goes to second to get a man there. And now down at third base, it is Valbuena. Castillo retired on the force out, three to six at second, while Kalish reaches on a fielder's choice. Playing deep at first base. Takes the middleman. Takes what would have been the go-ahead run out of scoring position. And, uh, boy, a long throw, and that's <laughs> you hold your breath a little bit. You certainly don't want to get uh, Cubbies on second and third either. Now Mike Olt, the batter, is struck out twice. Two down, runners at the corners. And he hits Olt. He plunks old, and now the bases are loaded. Didn't get much of them, but kind of a drive by along the rib cage. Eric Hensky, first base coach, commiserating. The Cubs have loaded the bases for the first time tonight. Chris Stewart will go out and speak with Garrett Cole here, getting set to face Arismendi Alcantara. Alcantara is two for two. An infield single in the third inning, and then a solo home run over the Clemente wall in right in the fifth. Alcantara is swinging a good bat tonight. Both the right-hander Holtzkim and the left-hander Lafran boys appear ready in the bullpen. Pirates need maybe, the, well, the biggest out so far tonight. Ball one. And down to the bottom of the order. Alcantara, the seven hitter. Logan Watkins, the eight hitter on deck. And the pitcher spot after that. Pitch number 100 coming. But Cole doesn't want it to go any further past Alcantara here. If it does, I don't think Garrett's going to be involved. 1 0 pitch. That's low. 2 0. And he is really struggling. Well, Contra with a 2 0 count, probably looking to take a really big swing here. And a hitter's count with the bases loaded and two down. He got he got crossed up. Stewart, see the glove move. Stewart and Cole getting back on the same page here. Watch the glove. Reaching up, thinking a fastball, up and away, and got the late break. Valbuena is the runner at third base. For a second base, Ryan Kalish. Mike Holt is the runner at first for Chicago. Two outs, a 2 1 pitch from Cole. Now it's 3 and 1, and Garrett Cole dangerously close to pushing a tying run across with a walk. Now Contra's got two pitches to play with here. He's going to be looking for a pass ball. Barrett struggling for this degree. Popped it up. Back to the plate. Stewart. And the Cubs leave him loaded. Cole gives up a run, but wriggles off the hook with a bases full.
for the Cubs and the Cubs had a big threat going against Garrett Coley and loaded the bases up. Alcantara two for two the home run and this happens. Got in on his hands. And the fans loving it. Why not? Tough spot. Chris Stewart with a big reaction there, and that preserves the lead through five and a half innings for the team and for Mr. Cole. And Cole's night will be finished up. Alcantara pops out for the final out of the top of the sixth. They go to the bottom of the sixth, and Stewart leads off. He is one for two with an RBI tonight. Andrew Lambeau will hit for Cole. Nothing and one to Stewart. Justin Grimm set to deliver for Chicago. It's low and away for a ball one and one. Is Luke in the center field, and that is going to drop for a hit. Second hit for Chris Stewart tonight. Couple, couple flares by Chris Stewart, but they count. That was uh, being kind of flare. I think uh, that bat was shattered. It works. That was broke, but it sure sounded like it. <laughs> Doesn't matter. He's on the base. Yeah. Makes for a better story. The bat's broken. Chris Bosio, the pitching coach, will come out. Of course, with Lambo coming up being a pinch hitter, Bosio has to come out and tell the pitcher Grimm what to do with Lambo. Lambo swung a pretty good bat. Last two pinch hit appearances, he's got hits, including a double his last time up against the Phillies. Let's take a look at tonight's AT&T fan photo. You sent him in. Hashtag Bucks fan photo. Let's see what we have tonight, Steve. That a Steve Blass signed baseball, a Kent Colby signed baseball, and an Andrew McCutcheon signed picture. How about that? Yeah. Nice stuff. Tri trifecta. I know you remember signing that specific ball, right? Uh, wait a minute. What, uh -oh. here? what is this? Hockey season's around the corner. Yeah. I guess when we say bring your glove, we don't specify. Glove save. <laughs> it should be a baseball glove, but. Yeah, you oh, wait, your goalie glove. We got oven gloves. We got baseball gloves. We got hockey gloves. Well, they got goalie camp going on. Pitch coming to Lambo. He's in the dirt. To Andrew. Let's go, yeah, that's a different kind of glove there, Steve. You got a couple pairs of those laying around the house? No, I don't. Stylish, yet understated. One and one to Lambo. Lambo hitting for Garrett Cole in the bottom of the sixth inning. Garrett goes six, gives up three on five hits, a walk, and six strikeouts. 103 pitches for Cole tonight. 69 of those for strikes. His ERA went up a little bit, from 389 to 392. 1 1 to Andrew Lambeau. 
outside two and one. Garrett's been around that uh, six inning mark. It was now his last four starts. And Garrett tonight, you know, he was watching Liriano deal last night and talking about the first pitch strikes, get ahead of guys, strike one. Tonight didn't do that all the time, and I think that's something that he knows he needs to work on. 16 of 25 first pitch strikes for Cole tonight. 64 percent of the time he had a first pitch strike. Lambo to center field, Alcantara waiting for it. And that is out number one. Let's go back to our Root Sports studios with Dan Potash and a game break. All right. Another group crew on top, 2 1 in the fifth. Cardinals leading the Rockies 4 1 in the fourth. Atlanta one nothing over Texas in the fifth. Sometimes you're going to get help from other teams, but you have to help yourself. You Got to win the games that are in front of you. Well, if you win, you can't lose ground. Harrison is two for two with a walk, and Josh is now three for three. The National League batting leader is at first base with his third single of the night. No doubt about this one. Sharply hit up the middle. And the competitor atop the list, along with Jay Hay, is Justin Morneau. He is 0 for 2 in that game against St. Louis. He's average at 315. So Jay Hay. Moving up to 319 right now. And they haven't been able to get him out. Three hits and a walk for Josh Harrison. The beat goes on. One out, two on. Time to pick up a run here if the Bucks can do it. 11 hits for the Pirates, leading by just a run, four to three. And Mercer. This one bounced. And the catcher, Castillo, missed on the first attempt to pick it up. Both runners move into scoring position. And in golf, they have an expression when you peak. It looked like Castillo might have looked at what was happening with the runners as he grabbed for the ball. Let's check it out. Bad pitch. Good block. Yeah. Yes. Took a little peek. Oh, you put the pressure on by taking off. Well, Stewart made the quick decision. Doing the dirty work here, sliding hit first into third. Infield comes in now for the Cubs, one out. Second and third for Mercer. He has an RBI single. He's two for three. Outside for a ball. He'll check down with McLeva after each delivery. Playing up on the infield except at third base where Val Buena stays deep. He saw a rocket hit down to him in the first inning by Jordy. 2 0. Mercer chops it foul. And a two ball, one strike count to Mercer. Separation. Separation. Cutchin, who was on deck trying to catch Justin Morneau. Justin Grimm stretch. Now the two ball, one strike pitch to Mercer. And Jordy hits one. And the right center base hit. Stewart scores. Here comes Jay Hay. Three RBIs for Mercer. Six to three, Pirates. Big hit for Jordan. Huge. So that little flare by Stewart gets things going, and the Pirates pulling away some. The 
This is the seventh three hit game of the year for Jordy Mercer. He now has 53 RBIs. Watkins just missing it on the diving attempt. And now the one two hitters, Harrison and Mercer, each with three hit nights. One out for McCutcheon. It was one for three. Pitch upstairs. And Stephen, note on uh, on Harrison, just a bit. He is seven of his last nine versus the Cubs. When you go back to last Friday, and you heard a big reaction from the crowd coming close to Andrew. Uh, you know, it's becoming a theme that a lot of people don't like. Fans, teammates. When things become a theme in that particular era, area, it gets a lot of scrutiny. Well, so Martin had something to say last night in Philadelphia when Luis Garcia threw at the head of McCutcheon. Pitched downstairs, 2 and 0. See, there's also a thin line if a guy get, is getting knocked around a little bit. Sometimes as a pitcher you want to move, you let them know you're out there. You want to move people away. There's a way to do it without you know, without nailing somebody without throwing at your head or you know, but up and in is, is you know it's, it's part of the game it's, that it is part of the game. Too old to catch. Outside three and oh. Twelve hits for the Pirates. They have been bringing their lumber to work. That's for sure. In recent days, they have 82 hits over their last six and a half ball games. One of our tips tonight: keep the Pirate bats hot. Green light down to third base. Foul play them. He'll go to second. Ready, he's going to be safe at second. Watkins dropped it. Mercer okay. Went into the second base pretty hard. You all right? I'll tell you, the Cubs have had balls flying out of their gloves all night long. Taking a wide slide to protect McCutcheon, but Watkins, who was taken out by Walker earlier, and we talked about the fact that Walker might have had an effect on this ball game, and maybe it was lingering. Watkins probably hearing footsteps there, trying to get the ball out of his glove before he caught it. So still one out. First and second. And Walker to the plate. And Neil getting the bat left handed, but he won't face Justin Grimm. Rick Renteria will make a change. As Grimm is going to come out. And Blake Parker will be coming in. A pitching change at PNC Park. Pirates six, Cubs three.
Penn Hills and Central Valley. It's an intra-conference matchup. One of the best teams in AAA, the Central Valley Warriors, taking on one of the best in Quad A, the Penn Hills Indians. The action kicks off tonight after Pirates postgame on Root Sports. Golf Tower, with a, a different looking light show tonight. Yep. Eric Cole talking to Chris Stewart. Stewart's helped him out tonight, both behind the plate and at the plate. Those hoping they can raise that again when this one's done. Zoltan, huh? Blake Parker tore it up at AAA. 25 saves and 27 chances. It hasn't transferred to the Cubs with a 6-6-1. ERA. Justin Grimm ends up going one full inning. Two earned runs and three hits for Grimm. But he's still responsible for the two men on base McCutcheon at first and Jordy Mercer over there at second. Pitcher of record for the Cubs would be Suyoshi Wada, having given up four earned runs and four and a third. Eric Cole, the pitcher of record for the Pirates, he's finished through six. Parker's pitch to Walker, a strike on the inside corner. Keep piling them up. Never know how many it's going to take. Says you got to score one more than the other guys. Three more is okay too. Yeah. So six more. I would uh, be very welcome for Garrett Cole, who if things go the Pirates' way, would pick up win number nine. Sometimes they don't have to be pretty; they just have to be. Runners off first and second, one out. 1-1 one, one pitch to Neil Walker. Out in front, off-speed pitch. Parker was recalled from AAA Iowa on the 1st of September. It was the sixth time he had been with a big club this year. Commuter, the Iowa Express. And John Holdscomb. Back up, getting ready. Six foot nine inch right hander. What I have heard about him is the power cutter. A lot of speed. Cut. Kind of a fastball. Walker thought his final tip hit the ground. And he is asking home plate umpire Paul Schreiber about that, who called him out. And he said that Castillo caught it in the air. And now the crew chief, Ted Barrett, Can get some help. Is going to get some help on this thing. Whether Walker struck out or not, Neil thought the ball hit the ground. He's going to go talk to the second base umpire. Let's see. Yeah. Looked like it did, didn't it? Yeah. But uh, looks can be deceiving, I guess, because Neil's not coming back. Uh, Clint Hurdle coming out of the dugout right now, and once. An explanation from Schreiber. Neil is still upset about it. But that first replay we showed you, it looked as though the ball hit the ground first before it was short hopped by the catcher Castillo. And all Clint can do here is ask for help. Well, they went into conference one. It, uh, it would be very unusual for them to go into conference again. Got an appeal to to go to the second base umpire. They still rule him out. Clint trying to stand up for a second baseman. Is standing up for a second baseman. So 
Dennis Schreiber saying foul tip. And Castillo, yeah, of course, he's not going to say anything, but looks like the ball may have hit the ground first. So two men out. First and second pinch hitter is Gregory Polanco. Batting for Tabata. Facing Blake Parker. And breaking ball in for a strike. Challenge that. Can't challenge balls or strikes, and the only fair or foul balls you can challenge are the ones that are behind the first and third base umpire. So Walker unhappy. He's got to settle for a strikeout. For four tonight. One and two to Polanco. Oh, Castillo stole one. Catchers will do that occasionally. They'll still strike. They'll try. They'll try a lot of times. Different ways. One two to Gregory. Swings in and hits it foul. Polanco trying to get back in the swing of things. It was such a great start when he was first called up. One two from Parker. Polanco out on strikes. Pirates leave two, get two. There was one error. And it's a 6 3 Pirate lead after six. You're incredibly talented, and I'm really pr I'm proud to be part of what you do every day. 
On this week's Inside Pirates Baseball, we're bringing you part two of Ike Davis mic'd up. Part one certainly wasn't enough. You need part two. Talk to the guys about how many at bats it takes before a young player just gets it. And recap plays of the week. There's much more on Inside Pirates Baseball presented by Allegheny Health Network tomorrow after postgame on Root Sports. Well, the PNC Park debut of John Holtzcomb is been, here. I've been looking forward to this. Yeah. Gregory Polanco will stay in the game in right field. And now a near capacity crowd will see John Holtzcomb pitch at home for the first time. They've probably heard so much about him while on the road. This will be his fifth major league appearance. Originally drafted by the Mets. Delivers a strike to Logan Watkins. Things didn't work out for him in the Mets organization. Ended up bouncing around in the independent leagues, San Angelo and Amarillo. Had one game with San Angelo. And it was a scout by the name of Mal Fishman who saw him. And told the Pirates, give this guy a chance. And he's got another major league strikeout. That's a long drink of water right there. And he throws hard. And he's probably got a good downward plane. Being that tall. Not a bad combination. Rafael Lopez is the hitter. He bounces one toward the middle. Mercer charges and throws him on. And speaking of playing, Steve Holtzcomb was signed by one of the independent league teams this year. And he had to ask the question to the guy that signed him. And he said, if I don't do well, will you fly me home? Do I get playing fair home? Legitimate question when you've been bouncing around like that. So he goes from asking that question to riding on a charter aircraft in an independent race in the major league. Yeah, step right in up. just a few months time kind of a dream year and gets credit for not giving up the dream two men out back to the top of the order and it is Chris Coglin strike one to Coglin Holtzcomb did have a problem with the strike zone at one point, and he seems to have figured that out. In his earlier days, he could throw it hard, but didn't know where it was going sometimes. That's five straight strikes. Well, eventually, you get the message if you don't throw strikes, you're not going to pitch very long, professional. So, message delivered, message received. Two just outside. Talked to Tom Filer, the Triple A pitching coach, the other day about him. He said that when they first got him, they sent him to Double A. He was there ten days, and the Pirates were saying, "We got to move him up. He doesn't belong here." And uh, he has shown why. Another punch out for Holdscomb. You got to know one to Holdscomb and Cole. Coglin is out on strikes. A 1 2 3 inning. It's stretch time here at PNC Park.
the high school gridiron action but right here. John Holtzcomb eight pitches seven strikes two strikeouts and a ground out and a one two three seventh inning. What do you think. I think he had to be pretty tough on those independent league hitters. <laughs> That's what I think. <laughs> He's pretty tough on these guys right now. That was kind of fun to watch. Zach Roscoe Ros Ros coming on to make an appearance number 14. Water Grim Parker Roscoe. Park goes two thirds, two strikeouts. Mike Davis will be the batter. Mike with a sacrifice fly in his first plate appearance. Drove in Jose Tabata in the fifth inning. And Ike a foul tip. Six runs on 12 hits for the Pirates. Three runs on five hits. Two of those five hits left the yard. Solo home runs by Javier Baez and Aris Mendy Alcantara tonight for the Cubs. And two is Roscoe. But it was two quick strikes to Mike Davis. And he strikes him out looking on three pitches. Well, one man out for the strikeout of Mike Davis. Pirates and Cubs tomorrow, 7 05. Make sure to. Stay after the game for Fan Jam featuring Pittsburgh favorite Leonard Skinner live in concert. See and hear them perform all of their hits like Free Bird, Sweet Home Alabama, Simple Man, and many more. To learn how you can watch the concert from the field, go to pirates.com slash concerts. If you're coming to the game tomorrow night, still time to, to do that. Pirates.com slash concerts. I'm sticking around for that one. That is uh I mean, it's just like every time they they start a new song. Yep, heard it. Great, love it. <laughs> yep. Should be a great crowd on hand tomorrow night for Leonard Skinner to after the game. <laughs> Snyder with a 1-1 count. Travis walked and scored in the fourth inning. He's 0 for 2 otherwise. On left matchup, Roscoe and Snyder. Pitch outside. It'll be interesting to see if this night's rest is enough for Starling Marte, who had been swinging a very hot bat until he was hit in successive nights on the left hand and arm in Philadelphia. Getting a rest tonight. See if he comes back tomorrow. He might be playing along with the luxury of a win to. I don't know, maybe nudge that decision, give him a little more time. Well, another left hander due to pitch tomorrow on Felix Dubron. So Marte hits lefty as well. Lefty lefty matchup with Jeff Lott. Foul tip into the glove of Castillo for strike two. Three and two to Snyder. Base is empty. Pirates batting in the bottom of the seventh. And Snyder to left field, down the line, slicing. Coglin over near the corner and won't get it. Look at the road ahead, brought to you by Nissan. Felix Dubron, Jeff Locke, we talked about it. Locke seven and four. Dubron one and one. And Jacob Turner. Will start on Sunday opposite Edinson Volquez. Volquez 11 and 7, Turner 5 and 9. Turn the former Marlin and Dubron, former Red Sox. As the Cubs continue to acquire players. Side ball four, and for the second time tonight, Snyder has worked himself a walk.
Holtzkin originally drafted by the Mets. And that's his uh, rookie card with a signature on it that was uh, tweeted in. A resemblance there to the actor John Heater who played uh, Napoleon Dynamite. Yeah. Yep. And Pittsburgh Pirate fan Seth Myers recently uh, had a picture of John Holscomb on his late night show because there is a resemblance between Holscomb and Myers. One of those separated at birth things, except uh, John's got a couple inches on. on yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. On, on everybody he does. Foul ground third base side Valbuena. Two out. And guess who's here to see his look alike Seth Myers. In Pittsburgh again this year second time he's been here to see the Buccos this season. Seth's dad lives here in Pittsburgh and there with his mom tonight. So it's a family. Hi, Seth. He knows he's Hi, on. Seth. Sure he does. <laughs> <laughs> we found you. Brett Morrell is pinch hitting for the Pirates. See, look at him. Now he's laughing. <laughs> whole family up there in the suite. That's uh, Seth's dad in the in the back with the yellow. And now they see themselves on the two. Over the tarp. Seth saying, "This is the this is the side I look like him most." Snyder off of first base. Two ball, one strike pitch to Brent Morrell, batting in the nine spot for the pitcher Holston. Inside. Three and one. Another broken bat. It's been an expensive at bat for Morell. See what what's happening? That, 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 that ash borer is going around, killing all the trees and all the bats. The carpenter ants get in there. Something bees in the handle. Tony Watson getting up. Two and Morrell hits this one in the air to left center over to get it all contra and make the catch. And the Pirates are done in the seventh. Seventh full gone by at PNC Park. Seth Myers Pirates in front, six three.
a three game weekend set Pirates with a six to three lead over the Cubs. We go to the top half of the eighth inning with Steve Blass. I'm Tim Never. And there's Tony Watson. Come on to pitch the eighth inning for the Pirates. Ten and one. Second most wins on the Pirates, just behind Edison Volk has 11 wins. And if Garrett Cole gets the positive decision here tonight, he'll be third on the staff with nine wins. Javier Baez will lead off, number two hitter, shortstop, then Luis Valbuena and Wellington Castillo. Watson's pitch to Baez. Check swing foul strike one. Well, the Rangers have tied up Atlanta in the seventh. It's one one in Arlington. Atlanta two back of the Pirates in the wild card in that second spot. See if Texas Texas can help out the uh, Buckos tonight. Cincinnati's tied up Milwaukee two two in the seventh. The big question now is where is this delivery going to be? 0 oh and 2. Throw it over to Ike Davis. <laughs> <He'll> swing. <laughs> and the 0 2 from Watson. That's a little bit up and Baez laid off at 1 and 2. Good discipline. Strike three right there on the inside corner. Baez out on strikes for the second time tonight. Baez one for four. Paul Schreiber rings him up. Got a call? Well, one down in the eighth. And the batter now facing Tony will be Cubs third baseman Luis Valbuena. One and oh. Valbuena's one for three, had a bloop single in the sixth. Even count one ball, one strike. Nothing wrong with Tony's speed tonight, 94 miles an hour in that last delivery. This side, two, two and one. Cubs have action. Brian Schlitter is loosening up. The cub relievers who have spent time on the Iowa Express. Back and forth. Triple A to the big leagues. Come back. Sneered by Watson. Two out. Good play by Tony. Reaction. Watson facing Wellington Castile. Castile one for three, had an RBI base hit in the sixth. It's grounded out to Neil Walker at second base twice. Late on that one. Watson aggressive to the mid on the first pitch to Castile. One pitch. One and one. For the Pirates in the eighth, it'll be the top of the order. Josh Harrison up. That is a well traveled 
baseball fan, a veteran of Wrigley Field with all those pins. Popped up, and Stewart chasing it over to the cup, dug out, and it's going to be bouncing into the seats. Two to Wellington Castillo. Two men out, base is empty for the Cubs. Now this one to the gap in left center. One hop from McCutcheon. Castillo has his second hit. Just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one to look forward to Miller time later in tonight's game brought to you by Miller Life. And a pinch hitter Chris Valeka. 241 three home runs 10 RBIs. Valeka will hit for Kalish. From Tony. It doesn't look like the Orioles are missing Chris Davis too much. They give the Yankees one run in 18 innings tonight. Winning a double header. Double header. Two to one and five zip. Baltimore keeps on rolling. They've shrunk their magic number and they are just uh, really. Days away from clinching the East, and this is their largest lead that they've had in the Eastern Division this late in the season since 1979. Went to the World Series and lost to the Pirates. And Manny Machado, also one of the key figures, young player, great young player, is out. Missing their catcher, Matt Weeters. Currently, and Chris Davis, the 25 game suspension. Apparently, they also have a next man up philosophy. Valeka now two balls and two strikes. American League East. But then 11 games up on the Blue Jays. The Red Sox, who are coming in Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 23 and a half out. Boston guaranteed of a losing season now 83 losses. Uh, Sox are going to have to have a big finish. Dustin Pedroia, their second baseman, out for the rest of the year, shut down due to injury. Two and two to Chris Valenka. Two outs, man aboard. Jersey on tonight, the clutch, clutch t shirt. Trying for that inside corner and missed. Andrew McCutcheon. Still vying for an MVP award. Might be a back to back winner. Payoff pick. Swing and a miss. And Tony Watson extends his scoreless innings streak to ten and a third. Go to the bottom of the eighth, six three Pirates.
slumber tonight. It's brought to you by Yellowwood. There is base hit number one. There is number two. And here is number three. He's also scored two runs. Josh Harrison, the National League leader in batting average, a 319 average. Bringing the lumber tonight. Brought to you by Yellowwood. And he leads off the bottom of the eighth inning. Pirates up six to three. It's new Cubs pitcher, Brian Schlitter. Right-hander coming on. Three hits and counting. Pirates. Oh gosh. Pirates, uh, Steve, tonight searching for win number 78. They're eight above 500, looking to go to nine above 500, which would be the high watermark for the season. And if they can do that, they would uh, keep pace with the Cardinals. Cardinals uh, still in action against Colorado late, 4 1, leading the Rockies. Brian Schlitter. And now Matt Caesar. Comes into the ball game, you'll play right field. Josh Harrison looking for another one. Three for three with a walk. He's been on base all four times. Strike one to Josh. The continuation of game one last weekend in the 11th inning, Josh went out to shallow left center field while playing shortstop and turned an ankle, missed three straight games, and now he's running out of ground ball to short. Baez throws him out. And Josh is three for four. Lots of folks in this building tonight. Tonight's attendance 35,638. Just a Nats eyelash shy of a sellout tonight. Hope you'll make it a point to come out in the final homestand of the regular season. Two more left with the Cubs, then a day off Monday, three with the Red Sox, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And then the Milwaukee Brewers in next weekend. What could be a big series as far as the wild card or even the division is concerned. Pirates.com to get your tickets. Also pick them up at PNC Park Box Office. 1 0 to Mercer. And Mercer's had himself a night. Three hits, three runs batted in. Four of these swings and misses. The top two guys in the order. Six for eight tonight. That'll work. Jordy has hit safely now nine of his last 12 ball games. Chops one foul, stays one and two. Another at bat coming for Andrew McCutcheon. One out, nobody on. Mercer, the hitter. And the one two. Side two and two. Pirates looking for their third straight win. And Mark Melanson, who had picked up a save last night, picked up saves in consecutive nights. That one Wednesday is 28th, got his 29th last night. And if the score is where it is, it would be a safe situation for him. Look for his 30th. First ground ball to short. Baez. And that's out number two. Right. Talking earlier in the ball game, not, not, not holding anything back. You don't leave anything to chance right now. Three run lead. So bring in your save man. Looks comfortable right now, but assume nothing. September. Side to McCutcheon. Well, Steve, if this homestand goes well for the Pirates, and no reason to think it wouldn't with their home record, one of the better ones in baseball, played very well here at PNC Park. The Pirates could secure another winning season right here, and chances are they will. 
Mm -hmm. Pick up their 81st and 82nd wins perhaps on this homestand. Win tonight would give them 78. And uh, four more would get them to 82. A lot of years, he said, well, we just want a competitive team in Pittsburgh. Well, you know what? When you get competitive, your goals change a little bit. Now, so step it up a notch. Let's, let's adjust the goals upward. 3-0 pitch. Inside corner for a strike. And that's one thing you don't hear about in the uh, pregame press conferences anymore. What about getting to 81 wins? Can you have a winning season? That, that, I, I've that, not that, heard that, that one time. That goal is gone. Year. That goal is gone. John Axford now alongside Melanson. Nice cut. Drills one. That's going to go to the wall. He cuts it around first. And he is in the second with a two out double. A ringing two out double. 35th double of the year for Andrew McCutcheon. He's two for five. A multi hit game for Kutch. Kind of a kind of a thought here in the bottom day. Hey, don't forget about me. That ball is laced. Looked like an angry swing. That's realizing he had second base easily and the two outs stops there. Pretty pure swing at a baseball. Touch at second, two down, Neil Walker. Walker with one hit and four trips. Struck out last time up. Now you talk about the fact you don't hear the questions about can you have a winning season this year. It goes back to last year in spring training when. Clint was asked one day the question specifically what is it going to take to win the division. He said 95 games. He did not predict the Pirates would win 95 games specifically. He said it would take 95 wins to win the division. The Pirates did not win the division. They finished with 94 wins. And Walker to left center field and around third McCutcheon and the Pirates with a four run lead. Second RBI of the night for Walker. Hill continues with the RBIs. Two more tonight. Touch on his horse, realizing he was going to score easily. 67 RBIs now for Walker. Gregory Polanco is 0 for 1. He struck out swinging in the sixth. Batting with two outs and a man aboard. Ball, ball strike one. And now Axford pitching alone. Now no longer a safe situation. So Melanson sits down. Chops it to first base. Old will play it. And we are on to the ninth. Pirates get a run on two hits. Lead it seven to three after eight.
Pittsburgh Pirates and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Neil Walker drives in a little insurance late. Pirates a four-run lead, seven to three. Walker a pair of hits tonight. And Seth Myers has a new Pirates jersey on. I wonder who's on the back. Maybe his look like his doppelganger. Yep, and the Pirates have tweeted this out. No one to hold scope. Seth Myers thanking the Pirates. Seth, uh, a few days ago, held up Holscomb's picture on his late night show. Saying there was a resemblance. Getting ready to raise that. We go to the top of the ninth inning. The pitch, right handed John Axford. His ninth appearance as a pirate. Axford's an interesting guy. You know, he's got his undergraduate from Notre Dame, his master's degree in sports information from Canisius. Hello. And he is uh, a film aficionado. Talked to him yesterday for a while in a dugout in Philadelphia. Told me about picking. The Oscars correctly 18 out of 18 now there's 24 categories but he only decided to pick 18 he got them all correct. That's pretty strong. And he put them out there on social media I guess on Facebook and Twitter. Before the Oscars so he had it out there in the public beforehand. And he told me this year he, he's under pressure now. His own pressure. To uh, pick all 24 categories. Next time around. Facing Mike Holt, the first baseman. Didn't somebody offer to put up a big prize or something? Or was it Warren Buffett or somebody for uh, picking all all the categories? Well, if that incentive was there, John might take advantage. Two one. Fouled off. Axford from Port Dover, Ontario, Canada. Said that his idol growing up was not a baseball player, but a hockey player, a defenseman, one of the real good ones, Rob Blake. And he said he wanted to emulate Blake. Thought he could be a good right handed shooting defenseman. Old shoots this one out to right field, and Polanco will turn and play it off the wall. Old to second base and just gets there standing. Following perhaps in the footsteps of what Tom Glavin, a very good hockey player, Richie Hebner, an old pirate, a good hockey player. Double number six for old. And now Melanson is back up. Should old score, it would become a safe situation again. Or if the bases were to be loaded, a time run on deck. That's when the save would come back into play. Arismendi Alcantara, he had a home run in the fifth inning, infield single back in the third. And with the bases loaded in the sixth inning, in a 4 3 ball game at that point in time, he popped up to the catcher Stewart to end the inning. But I will say this about Axford I did not find it a, a surprise that a kid from Canada wanted to grow up and be an NHL defenseman. <laughs> really? That was a little less than surprising. But he's a very interesting guy to talk to. And a strike. Delivered to Alcantara, and it's one and two. I'm a big movie fan. I'd like to get his top five picks, his top five movies of all time. Be, well, he does watch uh, different kinds. Still, I got a lot of strange and obscure movies. He, he watches them when he's on the plane or on the road, and movies that he knows nobody will watch with him. <laughs> He'll watch when he's traveling. But yeah, I think you'd enjoy talking yeah. about. I know you like films too. Yeah, and I've been taking uh, I've been taking off a lot of the movie 
selection committees. So Have you? maybe some of those would be the obscure. Yeah. Spend more time in the in the theater. All right. Coming attractions. Strike three call. Alcantara watches it go by and he is out. Took something off the speed. Got, got away with the breaking ball up at the top of the strike zone. If you fool them, they don't swing. They can get away with that location. The Cubs have gone down 11 times tonight on strikes. Logan Watkins, the second baseman, he will take a strike on the outside part of the plate. He struck out 12 last night in Philadelphia. The Pirates continue to put up double digit strikeouts. I think when you're getting double digit hits and double digit strikeouts, things are going well. And Watkins gives himself up with a bunt right back to the pitcher in the ninth, down by four runs. Thank you very much. That will make. Rick Renteria scratches his head. Right on cue. Yeah, keep getting double figure strikeouts, double figure hits. Good combination. Well, Matt Caesar's first plate appearance tonight. Everybody's up at PNC Park. Yeah, why not? And Axford delivers. That's up high for ball one. On the note of Matt Caesar. One on one. Strikes to Matt Caesar. Cubs down to their last strike tonight. Axford set. The one two to Caesar. September so far nine and six against the Central, looking for their tenth win against the division. That one's a little low. They have gone four and one in five series against the Central Division in August and September. They're trying to put a down payment on a series win here against the Cubs. Just one strike away now. She loves it. So does Big Brother. Two ball, two strike pitch. Maxford works a full count. Jeff Locke tomorrow night. He has won five of his last six decisions, hoping he can keep the ball rolling with this good play at PNC Park all season long. Three two. That one's fouled out of play. Yeah, Locke and Dubron tomorrow. More left handed action tomorrow night. Both south paws. Mysterious moon over the bird tonight. The remnants of Monday's full moon. Payoff pitch to Matt Caesar. Strike three, and the ball game is over. 
Yes. And the Pirates take game one. They've won three straight. They have equaled their high watermark of the season at nine games over 500. Well, you knock 14 hits around and you're, you're liable to do some damage. This is a ball game till the bottom of the sixth inning. It's a 4 3 lead. And the Pirates just kept on trucking, kept on hitting, and got it done. Harrison with three hits, Mercer with three hits, three RBIs. Walker, a pair of runs batted in tonight. Pittsburgh kid getting it done. And, and Garrett Cole gets win number nine. Right, and the bullpen shuts it down for three innings, three zeros. That's big, seven, eight, nine, zeros. Pirates have cut it to two pending the outcome of the St. Louis Colorado game. Cardinals leading late in that game four to one over the Rockies. Steve's heading downstairs and we'll send it downstairs as well. Dan Potash is patiently waiting. All right Tim thank you very much. You know the Buckos have to be thrilled with the way that they finished that 10 game road trip by winning six of their final seven games and are probably ecstatic about opening up this nine game homestand their final nine games at home with the victory of the Chicago Cubs as Tim said. They are now nine games over 500 for the third time this season, a season high. They have also now won 45 games at home and continue their dominance over the Chicago Cubs, not only here at Pansy Park, but of course at Wrigley Field. For more on what happened tonight, let's go downstairs to Robbie Antzmikowski, who's standing by with one of the stars in Jordy Mercer. Well, Dan, I'll tell you what happened with Jordy Mercer. The guy had three hits and three RBIs tonight, and if Valbuena doesn't make a great play, that's another extra base hit that you had there, Jordy. How do you explain the offensive outburst with this ball club? 27 runs in the last four games against the Cubs. How does that happen? Uh, nobody wants to get out, basically. Um, you know, when, when one or two guys gets going, it uh, kind of feeds off each other, and um, we just keep it rolling. It's, it's a lot of fun. You were a part of this last year, and now you're obviously a big part of it again this year. How is this uh how does this whole thing come together in the late parts of the season for this club at just the right time? Well, I think last year, you know, was a, a, a big turning point for us. Um, we, you know, we gained a lot of, you know, experience and, and stuff like that. And I think we carried over this year and um, we're kind of in the same spot, you know, um, where we were last year. And I feel like that once you've been there, uh, you've done it, and you know how to handle it and then you move on. How do you explain the, uh, the performance that your bullpen has put forth here in the last eight ball games? They have been fantastic. Their ERA is just over half a run. What kind of lift have they brought to this ball club? Well, we're built on pitching. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Pitching and defense is our key. And uh, whenever our, we get good quality starts and then our bullpen comes and slams the door, uh, we can win a lot of games. And uh, we're, we're proving that right now that we're right in the thick of things because our pitchers are keeping us in games and giving our offense allows uh, a chance to score some runs and uh, win the game. The worst case scenario by the end of ball games tonight, a two and a half game deficit behind St. Louis and a one and a half game lead in the second wild card spot with eight more to play where you are the second best ball club in the National League here on the North Shore. What's this going to be like? Well, I know we have a game tomorrow and I think that that's the, the only way we can take it right now is a game by game. And uh, I know we play the Cubs tomorrow and they're going to be ready to play. So we got to come out, uh, you know, carry this momentum over to tomorrow. Hopefully we take the series tomorrow, Jordy. Thanks. Thank you. Jordy Mercer and the rest of the Buckos. Dan, how about that performance the last couple nights? Oh, Getting no. the job done, right? That's right. Let's stay with the good thing and let's stay with Jordy Mercer. As promised earlier, it's Miller time presented by Miller Lite. And Jordy Mercer entered tonight's game 13 for his last 42 with eight RBIs. Well, he adds to that tonight with three more hits, three more RBI. Jordy now has seven three hit games this season as his average continues to close in on 270 on the season as the shortstop is having a fine campaign for the Buckos this season. All right, we are just getting started as we raise the Jolly Roger here on the North Shore on Pirates post game presented by the Allegheny Health Network. We'll bring you Clint Hurdle's post game comments. We, of course, will bring you player reaction from the Pirate Clubhouse. We will check in on the Cardinals, the Brewers, and the Braves. And, of course, my sidekick tonight, Steve Blass, who bears well to break it all down as once again, the Buckos raise the Jolly Roger for the 45th time at PNC Park. Your final 7-3. Stand by for Pirates postgame presented by the Allegheny Health Network. It's coming up next.